Hey there, Liegeverse, and welcome. I'm coming to you live from Liegeverse on Facebook, facebook.com slash Liegeverse. And I'm super excited. Today, uh, <laughs> we're going to be celebrating one year of Liegeverse. A year ago today, I started this page. I think I started posting uh, shortly after that, but we're, I'm going to go by the creation date of the page. And... Uh, Within, I think it was within the first month or so, uh, we'd hit our first 100 likes and got really lucky. Uh, one of our posts got a, a little viral, micro viral, I guess you'll call it. And uh, it's been awesome. It's been a wonderful journey. Uh, Captain Harlock and the Arcadia, the music and scene pulls up uh, nostalgic. Fantasy Star Online, interesting. Interesting, I played a lot of that game on GameCube offline, uh, but we're going to talk about the Liegeverse tonight, and I thought this was, this might be fun, um, there's all these, you know, tier lists, people are always doing their tier list online, and I figured I should probably, uh, take, take a crack at it, right? Just give it a shot, and see how she goes. So, that's what I want to do, I want to sit with all of you and I'm gonna bring it up here um, just oh, let me full screen this there we go so we have a couple tier list actually as much as I don't wanna yeah I want to get rid of our hoot suite oh, oh! <laughs> that's fine I don't think anything too sensitive was there um, but yeah, so we're gonna go through, and there's two of these. One is for, um, I can't, there we go. One is for series, which I don't think this is complete, and we're also missing Yamato. Um, I'm going through here, the characters are nuts. Like, this is nuts, so we're gonna do this second. Yeah, yeah, they, they do include Harlo, uh, they do include Yamato characters here. So, on our own, I, I don't know how to edit these on the fly. I'm sure, maybe if I log in, I can do it. Yeah, 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 no Yamato Danguard. Like, what, what is that about? Just his original works. Okay, okay, okay. So maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, I don't know why they would exclude that, though. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but what I want y'all to do is to help me get this list organized, and if you guys are having fun, uh, we'll, we'll move on to the characters. But <laughs> if nobody's interested in me doing uh, the, the series tier list, then I'm probably not going to do... There was like, so how many are there? 5, 10, 12, there's probably like 70 characters. I don't even think we could do that on one live stream. Unless we were just like, three second, three seconds maximum, make a decision. And uh, I want to be able to talk about things and talk about the Liegeverse. Um, so, what I'm going to also want to do here... Oh, that's kind of silly. Huh, kind of locked up here. Anyways, that's fine. Uh, well, I guess you'll see every program I have open. There's my Epic Games launcher right there. Uh, just want to turn down the music. And we are listening to the uh, Queen Emeraldus synthesizer fantasy. So, yeah, maybe you guys aren't so interested in hanging out. That's okay. I, f I just figured I'd say hi. And uh, if anybody was curious, anybody was... Uh, you know, interested, we'd, we'd do it. So, I'll just do this real quick, and uh, we'll, we'll probably pull out here, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that follows the page. So, what do we got here first? Uh, this is the cockpit. And the cockpit is fantastic. Uh, the works of uh, uh, talking about World War II and Matsumoto's extreme fascination with uh, World War II uh, fighter planes, and that's particularly because of Matsumoto's father's involvement uh, flying these planes, I believe that was uh, during World War II, where, from what I understand, I, I could be slightly uh, misstating what happened, but he, he was involved in, uh, unfortunately, sending men to their deaths, uh, kamikaze pilots, from what I've been told. So, that 
left a huge mark on Matsumoto because Matsumoto's father after the war did not return to the military and uh, his father is basically the archetype for Captain Harlock and you can look at the Captain Harlock series is basically Matsumoto imagining himself and his father uh, traveling through space together whereas uh, Matsumoto is a Totoro and also somewhat of a Daiba uh, but where, where would we put this? Is this S tier? I'm not sure. We're, we're, we're also talking about anime here. This is very specific to say these are anime works. And I think that the cockpit is probably the highest quality animation in any Lieji Matsumoto work. Um, in, in the 20th century. It is the crowning animation achievement of anything Matsumoto was involved in. I would say probably uh, Queen Emeraldus, the OVA being second to that in terms of the quality of the animation. Uh, but so there, there's something very S tier about this, right? But I'm but just because I don't resonate with it personally, I'm more inclined to put it into A tier. Like it is good. It is really fantastic to watch. It's quick. It's easy. But do I get fanatical about the cockpit? That's not necessarily how I roll. So I'm gonna put it at A tier for now. So here's a problem. Uh, I'm changing F tier to I don't know. I've never watched Maytel Legend. I'm just gonna be honest about that right now. Um, what I have seen part of is uh, but this one, I believe. What is this one called again? Uh, Space Symphony uh, may tell. Which I have seen part of. It did not hook me. It didn't really hook me. I'm going to have a really hard time putting anything in D or E. Or e. I'm going to change that to F. We're going by the American uh, grading system here. I'm going to put it as a C for now. I think it's probably just an average uh this is gonna be controversial uh probably i think most people if they were gonna put something in d or f tier they would put gun frontier there i'm putting gun frontier in b uh gun frontier uh, gets a lot of uh crap for stereotypes and very controversial subject matter and for me personally i equate this to when people you know say negative things about Quentin Tarantino with Django Unchained and, and personally my take personally is that Django Unchained is not uh, worse because it talks about stereotypes or portrays stereotyping in, a, in an honest way. Uh, you believe them to be afterthoughts because the manga and anime are consistent every time. Um, what is them? What are you referring to as them, uh, Minaru? Um... Moving on, Cosmo Warrior Zero. I think Cosmo Warrior Zero, um, Steve Bloom, Captain Harlock. Another reason why I put Gun Frontier at B is because I, I really like Steve Bloom, Captain Harlock. I don't think he's the perfect Captain Harlock. I don't think we've ever gotten a perfect English Captain Harlock. We've never gotten that. Uh, Gun Frontier was pretty great. The manga was pretty biting. Um, I liked them. I liked what I read of the manga too, and and I saw it as a less censored version of Gun Frontier. But I didn't. Uh, the editing and, uh, uh, from the manga to the the anime, uh, and I would call it censoring. I would call it self censorship that they put on that. Um, to me. It's kind of like they went halfway on the anime. Like, what if, what if Gun Frontier, like, beat out to Django Unchained and just went full edge? I think it would be, it might be, like, a really classic anime if that was the case. It would have stuck out, at least, you know? But, uh, Matsumoto's, uh, I, I, I'm gonna double back on that, but... Let's talk about Cosmo Warrior Zero, okay? So Cosmo Warrior Zero um, probably had a smaller anim... I would say per episode probably had a smaller animation budget than Gun Frontier just because um, most of the production budget uh, was, was cut because most of the work had been done for the video game. 
So when it came to actually animating this, you watched off Space Symphony May Tell and enjoyed it? Yeah, I just watched like the first couple episodes and uh, Nazca, uh, it's not, it's not Nazuka, right? It's Nazca or I think it's Nazca. Um, they didn't hook me as much. The feral wild boy, I, that, that, that surrogate young male character just didn't, just didn't connect with me, so I never finished it. Uh, so that's why I'm leaving it on I don't know. But I do appreciate hearing from you, um, Kevin. As for the cockpit, being a B-17 with a nuke makes this World War II not cringe. Fair enough. Was it atomic? Did they say it was atomic? I can't even remember. Um, it probably was atomic, right? It was, but Cosmo Warrior Zero is difficult because I do like the story. I like the characters. I, I like everything that happens, but the animation is bad. There is no getting around how bad the animation is in Cosmo Warrior Zero, which is actually kind of a travesty. Uh, I think the two bonus episodes they did, uh, the animation, sometimes, uh, I don't know, actually it just is more fun, so. Uh, Cosmo Warrior Zero is getting a B. It's on the same level as Gun Frontier for me, in terms of uh, enjoyability to watch it. Uh, I think Cosmo Warrior Zero has a better story, but Gun Frontier visually tells its story in a way that, that I prefer. It's like low budget, like, if you're gonna go low budget with something, be... Be more minimal, right? There's less elements in Gun Frontier that need to be extensively drawn out, that need to be... You know, does that make sense? There's less detail work, right? They're not drawing these hyper-technical spaceships over and over again which takes just time to do, even if it's a still image, which in Cosmo Warrior Zero, sometimes it's painful how, how much it is just one image being shrunk and, you know, thrown across the screen, because they did not do a good job with the motion graphics, in my opinion. This professor's daughter did. The professor's daughter, they made, it was nuclear specifically. I just couldn't remember if they said it was a nuclear uh, weapon specifically. So yeah, I'm putting them on the same tier. Ozma, I've only seen a couple episodes of. Uh, God, I might be putting everything on the B tier here, which I think is fair, just because Matsumoto's anime, most of it doesn't reach like soaring peaks of quality in the animation itself. And Matsumoto himself said that he was not really, uh, you know, after doing Yamato, he kind of realized that he wasn't an anime first and foremost guy, meaning that anime being his craft, and that that's not really what his craft was. His craft is storytelling, his craft is character design, world building. And animation is its own technical beast, and uh, Tezuka, I think he, he did align himself with Tezuka, whereas Tezuka got in super young, he had a huge budget to, to work with, he had a lot of money in hand to work with, and so he was able to immerse himself and quickly develop uh, a lot more animation skills, and uh, it's even possible that Matsumoto didn't work on animation as much as a, as a kid. It seems a lot of uh, Matsumoto anime works are rather mid-low budget, yes. Yes, that's... Uh, you know, a lot of Tezuka's later work almost falls under the same category, but I think Tezuka just, when his animes were still being, like, the 80s, he got a lot of budget in the 80s, whereas I think some of his budget, big budget stuff, I don't know, maybe I'm getting in the weeds here. Ozma, it's tough. Ozma to me looks really great. Uh, the story was really interesting. I slogged through dub, uh, subs. So, if something isn't, like, hooking me in my chest... I am delaying watching all of Submarine Nine-Nine, uh, but that's mostly because Blu-ray is just inconvenient. If they gave me a... That's the one thing I will critique about Discotech, is that they need to be more willing to give me an HD copy. 
uh, HD video copy that I can just stream on my computer with the Blu-ray. Like if I'm a, I don't want to have to bring my Blu-ray. Why is there, you know, and maybe there's a service fee they'd have to build in and they are more of like, you know, preserve physical media company. Ozma just seemed really good. I don't know how it ends. So I don't know if the ending, I don't know if like the middle and the end of it just make it crap. So I'm, I'm torn. I'm torn. It's not an A, even though it looks really, really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to put it at C for now, unfortunately. Queen Emeraldus OVA. The only problem, the only thing that makes me not want to put it in S tier is the it's too short. It's too short and they touch on too much cool stuff and then you never get to see how any of that cool stuff would have panned out. And this 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 is probably the most disappointing series simply because it's it's good and it's too short. So I I, I don't think I can give it S tier. I think we're OVA is a solid A tier. It's just too short. It's just too short and it's short. If it was like huge budget and four episodes and they crammed a lot more like visual stimuli in it and or at least like smoother animation, maybe. But this is a four episode series that I mean, maybe they blew it all on that 3D intro. I don't know. What do you guys think? We're like, all right, we got 12 episode contract right here. We're going to make the world's one of the world's first 3D animated intros for this. We're going to blow the doors down. All right, we have enough money left for four episodes. We better, that's okay. Can we fluid animate? No. OK, well, we got that intro in the bag. You think it's S? It's facets and fall short aren't exactly it's fault. No, 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 no. And that's the thing when you you're right. I'm saying, no, you're right. Um, but I don't want my intent to be misinterpreted. I think uh, even if a series can't blame its circumstances for its grading, it still falls in that grading for me. You know, uh, if there was really budget to do it. And I think uh, Toei or who I think Toei produced that. Uh, they like to use the Harlock or the Liegeverse works to experiment with new technology. Um, and I think that's kind of a good, good philosophy, right? If you're going to make something new, something old, you better do something interesting with it. And I've recognized this in a lot of different. Uh, if you did Ozma, it's actually pretty good, but it feels uh, sorry. Feels like a way. Yes. Yeah, I, I think so, too. It, it definitely could work. Uh, it just, it just didn't, it didn't connect, you know, and, and it's a problem too, because we're moving into an era, we were moving into an era of the 2000s where people, by the mid 2000s, I think it, you're, you're reaching the end of where I see kind of like 95 to 2005, uh, 94, we'll include 94 just because 94 is like a powerhouse year for media across all mediums, which is kind of crazy. You're curious about it? Never heard of it? You should definitely check it out. I, I think even if I put something F tier, it's still worth looking at just because it's Matsumoto. Like that, that's how I feel about it. And Matsumoto is just that interesting. And the world, you know, you will forgive a lot of these faults just because you are so invested in the world. And I think, uh, you know, the, the, the MCU has definitely done this. I mean, there are some definitive stinkers in that Marvel universe. I haven't watched really a single. I think I saw Iron Man. I think I saw part, maybe not all of Iron Man, but at least like 75 percent of it. Eh. But I know a lot of those movies are stinkers, but people are so invested in Marvel itself that, you know, well, I paid my $15 at the movies and I, I'm fuller of what I love, even though I just hated that. <laughs> and it's weird. He doesn't make bad shows enough said. All right. Fair enough, Michael. Fair enough, Michael. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not done. I'm not done. Maybe they do. Uh, what 
This is difficult. Can anybody tell the difference? I think this is a... Okay. I have not watched Eternal Fantasy yet. And it's dubbed, too. I'm trying to get through Submarine Super 99, and I I don't want to read. Don't make me do things. I'm a, I don't like... Who likes reading? I don't... <laughs> Um, Leisiverse works are great to experiment with, primarily for its blending. Yes, thank you for bringing me back on topic. Uh, blending of fantasy, classic storytelling, yes, sci-fantasy. Uh, it makes conceptual ideas open due to content. Absolutely, I mean that it... Dai Yamato, Dai Yamato is not on here. There's no Yamato, no Dangard, because they aren't original Leiji Matsumoto works. Which is, which is true. Um, okay. This is, this is, this is bonjour and this is a do, correct? Bonjour, a do? Am I right or am I wrong? Can anyone tell with these tiny ass? I think this is bonjour because it's got the, got no train and the second one has a train. Do I, do I have it wrong? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, these are both S tier. No, you know what? Uh, bonjour is S tier, adieu is B tier. Or A tier. A tier, not B tier. So, so far, my only S tier Lazyverse work is the first Galaxy Express 3.9 movie. Um... I mean, 2 is really a fantastic continuation, but it, and it doesn't need to be an S tier movie because you're already so invested into the first one. So, you know, that's really interesting. Some of the, I'm assuming this is the uh, series. Yeah, this is the series. Where do I put the series? The problem with the series is it is so slow. It is so slow and in a manga format, I can deal with it because you're it's like a casual read when you're reading. It's a different experience to when you're watching, right? Reading is a lot more uh, conducive to slow moments in a story and letting things lull before they go into the whatever deus ex machina situation that Leiji Matsumoto wants to put them into. I've seen the m movies for the Galaxy Express 3.9 series, which is different. Um, never watched it, but heard it was good. I'm not saying it's bad either. I, I'm thinking, yeah, I think we're about on the same mark here. Don't know much about my opinion ways. Hey, everybody's got their say to an opinion. Uh, if you convince me of something, by, by all means, but if you don't convince me, just know this is my list. Obviously, there are plenty of people who do know these two movies, or, uh, yeah, two movies very well. Um, God in the Lazy vs. Space Battleship Yamato, I don't have any exposure until 2015, so with Endless Odyssey. Is Endless Odyssey on here? Yo, they don't even have Endless Odyssey on here. What is with that? That's so weird. Maybe because they consider it a sequel to the... Anyways, but yeah, I think we're putting uh, the 3-9 series at B. I think you're right. Yeah, credit that uh, background music. We are listening to the Queen Emeraldus Eternal Fantasy synth uh, vinyl. Uh, but to continue on what, we, what I was saying before about... Uh, about cool things they do in Lazyverse works. Like Toei likes to put R&D money into Lazyverse works. And I think that's how they maintain like a really respectful relationship with them because it gives Matsumoto the opportunity to say, I've got a series that has advanced tech in it. And that's really important to him because he's a tech fiend from what I understand. Uh, even though he, I think he, he, I think he romanticizes old tech and I think he's still okay with new technology. Even though, even though he likes to, even though his series are like, oh, well, the machine men are bad. Well, he changes that later in life. And even around the time he made it, he wanted to have a machine body. 
He was just playing with the idea of it being a bad idea, which is a cool writing exercise. But anyways, Leon, uh, Queen Emeraldus OVA 3D animated intro. Uh, Submarine Super 99 has 5.1 surround sound, and it was made in like 2003 or something. It was like this anime with very little animation in it. Like, fantastic. It's got the same kind of uh, style as Gun Frontier and Cosmo Warrior Zero. But, uh, and then the Harlock movie, the, the 3D animated movie is the biggest example where Toei was like, we need to get in the Pixar game right now. We don't have anything to show. This is going to be our calling card. And that's why that, I don't think that movie bombed. Even, even if they lost money off of it, they were using it as uh, advertisement to other production companies. So Interstellar 5555. That animation is pretty good they do this blending thing between every frame which doesn't look bad it's got its own flow sometimes i wish that the animation and the rhythm synced up a little bit better in this movie i'm i'm i i want to put in an s really really bad i i i'm like 75 percent of the way there with s but there are things in intercella that are not S to me for the time they were made. Now, we are talking about a space rock opera design, uh, you know, for a French house album, you know, like Virgin Records put some money down for it, but they weren't trying to make, you know, for probably the budget they had, this is, I, I think it's S here. I, I think it's just too, definitive in the career of Matsumoto even though it's interesting like this is an original work but in a way it's like very the the creative director of Daft Punk who's basically like the third Daft Punk member um he's at, he actually I think he's got his own like nightclub or something going on now uh but he came up with a lot of the concepts and designed most of this thing. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet to put it at S here because it's it's like, it's not 50-50 Matsumoto Daft Punk. It's like 75% Daft Punk, 10% Liege Matsumoto, and 15% Toei Studios. So, and even though they did all the work putting it together, I value source point and leadership more than I even production. So that's where I'm at with it, Interstellar. The Queen Melania movie, I have to do the movie and the TV show and guys, I, I don't have it. I have to go pirate it somewhere and it's not calling to me. All right, here's where everybody thinks I should go. I'm sorry I'm not talking more about Queen Melania. I just don't know enough. So here's where everybody wants me to just like throw it in F. Our lock saga. Oh, oh my God. I'm going to vomit. No, it's I. Listen, I will put it in D. OK, it does underperform, but this is the third best looking Leiji Matsumoto anime uh, from the 20th century. I am out. It's, uh, you know what? It actually, it's the second best. It looks better than Queen Emeraldus OVA. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but the Harlock Saga movie looks better than Endless Odyssey looks. So it's really hard for me to put it in D. I want to put it in C really bad, but I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair to put it on the same as these two, so... Classic Harlock, 78. S tier, right? No, it, it's it's A tier. It's A tier. Uh, for me, and I know this is blaspheme. Uh, I'm doing it for a very specific reason, which we'll talk about in a couple seconds. Um, but the classic Harlock anime is good. It's incredibly interesting. It's... There's something about 
the classic series that does not gank me in quite as hard. I, I'm losing viewers saying this. I know. I know. Harlock 78 is the best. It is the one. It is the one true anime of the Legiverse. No. No, I'm sorry. Because there is no Christ analog story as the basis. It's only referenced. It's New Testament Legiverse. It, or, or it's not even, and it's not the gospel either. It's post-gospel New Testament. And that's great. That's great. Post-gospel New Testament of the Legiverse. That's fine. It is beautiful. It is well done uh, for the time. It's absolutely revolutionary. I give it uh, huge kudos for being what it is. And it's based on a wonderful manga. Uh, I don't know if the weekly like storytelling anime i wish that there were ovas in 78 they're probably uh, no there weren't really i wish there were ovas in 78 and i feel like if this was just an ova it would have been insane uh there's something something holding it back for me personally uh i'm also gonna put uh well yeah, I'm gonna put the the movie, the Arcadia My Youth movie at an A as well. Uh, I think I would I would actually if we're gonna start doing this, then we can go in and fine tune this, right? Like this this is better than those. Cockpit's gotta go back. I think this is better than this. I think that the Harlock seventy eight is the top A. Like, it's top A. Top... Top 10% of that bracket. Um... We could probably put this back here. Low... It's a low A for a do. I think cockpit's better than OVA. Uh... Arcadia My Youth is really great. The story is really fun. The biggest problem with it is that it is slow. And uh, I got in an argument with somebody over this one time. I was talking about uh, how would you, how would you introduce somebody to Captain Harlock? And I said, you introduce them via Galaxy Express 3.9, the first movie. And they were... They were miffed. They don't understand. Harlock's barely in that movie. Why would you... Why would you want somebody to find out about Captain Harlock through 3.9? That's how I found out about Captain Harlock. That's how I got into it. And it's because... The story beats and the action and the the composition of the movies themselves, uh, three nine a, a do three nine is a better constructed movie than Arcadia of My Youth. Arcadia of My Youth has a lot of awkward stalls, uh, stops and starts in its storytelling. Everything else it does really makes up for it. In fact, I'm gonna put it below the cockpit. I think I don't think it's as good as the cockpit. It's interesting though because you get to see a little bit of the Battlefield series in Arcadia and My Youth. So that, that's a really fun thing. Um, <laughs> I think I think my unpopular opinions are starting to spoil, spoil the milk. We will probably not be getting to uh, the characters unless somebody really, really wants to do that. Uh, down to our last three here. SSX, right there. It is the best shonen uh, Lazyverse anime that was ever made. It was in the wrong time, wrong place, wrong time, and got cut by half, uh, 40, 44, 45 episodes to 22, something like that, 24. I think it was 24, and eh, never mind, I'm, I never remember. But uh, best animation for its time period versus uh for an anime series we're getting very specific here that is not an ova uh and the story of totoro that is it is the gospel of the liegeverse 
Uh, if you look at Totoro as the analog for, for Jesus in the Bible, uh, which is pretty, pretty easy to do. Uh, I think it's pretty definitive that SSX is the gospel. Sorry for show off this screen. It's very ugly. Um, it is the gospel of the Legiverse, and therefore it was executed the best, in my opinion. Um, let's, I'm going to put, a, I don't want to finish in silence here. I would like to put on something for just a bit more. YouTube does not want to suggest me anything good. Let's just see. Okay. And, uh, Submarine Super 99, I'm through most of the series. I like it. Um, it's very unique. It's got some military vibes, kind of like Cosmo Warrior Zero. It's, uh, and, and, you know, it's more that military drama. It's n somewhat of a uh, sci fantasy. It definitely is a sci fantasy. Uh, is it as good? I would. You know, I, I don't want to give it a C. It's not an A. It's it's a lower B. I think it's a lower B. And I, I think if I'm looking at Gun Frontier versus... And I think a big part of it is that you don't get a lot of strong connections to the Liegeverse in what's happening. You know, you're not reminded of these other story beats the same way you are when you watch... Uh, Yeah, it, you, it's not the same way it is when you watch a Harlock versus a Galaxy Express versus a Yamato. You feel it very closely. I think it's just because it's not set in outer space. So, that's a thing. Music is a little loud. Uh, last one, Galaxy Railways. God, A is getting really clogged up. Uh... I think I like the Galaxy Railways. This is this is turning out to be kind of a rough tier list, but I really like Galaxy Railways. I think it is the best modern Lazyverse thing, like the best 21st century Matsumoto anime uh, series of any kind, OVA or otherwise. I think it's better than Endless Odyssey. I'm really kind of Shock, where would Endless Odyssey go? Let's, let's, or should I talk about Galaxy Railways more? I don't know. I, I think the Galaxy Railways really, it, it gives me the same feelings of those story beats. It, it connects me to the rest of the Liegeverse. Uh, and that's probably mostly because it's set in space. Uh, the characters, I got really invested into all of them. Uh, especially the side characters. Uh, which is a big thing in the Liegeverse. Like, the main characters are really cool. Harlock's really cool. But it's, for me, it's Totoro. Totoro's my favorite. And I've talked to plenty of people who also share that, those feelings. Um, so, Endless Odyssey had some Rintaro nonsense going on. Like, some actual crazy nonsense. Uh, it's... I would say it's it's probably a low B, but I'd be tempted to put it into the C category just because I did not enjoy it as much. I enjoyed parts of it more than uh, I've enjoyed things in Summary 999 or Summary 99 or Cosmo Warrior Zero, uh, especially the ending of e Endless Odyssey right before the ending mostly. Like, leading into the climax of Endless Odyssey is fantastic. I definitely recommend watching the series just to get to that point. Uh, the setup's okay. The setup's cool, too. So so it's good enough to hook you at the beginning, make you feel really awesome at the when you're going up to the climax. Climax happens. Uh, you feel ethereal, which is very typical, right? End of Yamato, end of... Uh, pretty much the end of every Legiverse series. It should give you that... If it's Especially if it's in space and sci-fantasy, should give you that sort of floating out-of-body 
kind of experience. That's what we've come to know and love. And then the resolution of Endless Odyssey is weak because they wanted more episodes. And I think that was a bit presumptuous of Rintaro, but I think Rintaro was being a bit pres presumptuous during the entire production of Endless Odyssey. Um, so what do you guys think? What do you, what do you, where do you think these other ones fit? Does anybody have any ideas? Uh, Maytel Legend. Let's, we'll just, a I just want to ask whoever's here. I know it's not a lot of you, uh, but that gives you extra power in your vote. So if we want to start here, how would you rate from S to F, skipping E, how would you rate Maytel Legend? Anybody? Anybody got any ideas? Oh my gosh! The chat stopped scrolling! Oh, I forgot! Oh my gosh, that's why I haven't been reading! Guys, I'm sorry. Streaming on Facebook is uh, a little bit more... annoying. <laughs> Let me see here. Can't weigh in on submarine. I'm so sorry, I just ignored you guys for like 10 minutes. Area 88 is not on the list. <laughs> I get you. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I think you're talking about the cockpit. Uh, wish Arcadia was the original design of the 3D movie instead of whatever they used. Uh, okay, you don't like the vest. I uh, love the new tech. Make the father use a typewriter with an old rotary phone. Yeah, oh yeah, the old tech was a huge part of it. And I think I'm getting like shoddy comment reception on all this. Twitch makes this so much easier. Which makes me kind of want to switch these to Twitch, but at the same time... Nobody's gonna follow me over there. <laughs> so that's how we are. Uh, so excuse me while I get my uh, stuff together. Like K became a captain. Yes. Yes, that is one of the cooler parts of uh, Endless Odyssey. I think that's... Definitely. That's that's what hooks you. Like this is great, great start to a movie. So whoever's idea that was, I don't know if that was Matsumoto Rintaro or whoever. Uh he's a proper whistle for big one. I don't remember that. Not your fault, Liege makes A rank anime. Hey, good point, good point. And we it. But Maytel Legend. Um Is anybody still here? Does anybody have an opinion on Maytel Legend? Just so we can finish this. I would like to finish it before I save it, because I am going to save it. I think. Might have to log in. We'll just switch out the camera. I'll do it off stream, won't be a big deal. I don't know if anybody has an opinion on uh, this. By the way, I hope you all can see... Oh yeah. That's how I missed it. Uh, check out if you want to go on Amazon, if you guys shop on Amazon regularly, if you like Liegeverse, consider using this link. Uh, that link's going to take you to the idea list I've set up. Uh, tons of dozens of cool Liegeverse things that you can find there. Models, manga, uh, DVDs, etc. Streaming, you can stream lots of content there straight from that little ideas le uh, list. So go ahead, check that. And you know what? Using the page links really does help us out. So if you're on, if you're planning on going on Amazon next time uh, to pick up something for Liegeverse or anything else, swing by the page, use one of our links. It's it helps us incredibly. Um, So Maytel Legend, that's that's all we're trying to figure out here. Maytel Legend. A story, the story of the, the mother and, and her two daughters. The Queen Queen Melania movie, I, I don't know. I, I I all I can do is ask for for you know either the Queen Melania movies, if anybody just shouts out a grade at this point. You'll have contributed, because I will... <coughs> I'll just list it as that, and, and we'll call it a night. <laughs> Unless you guys want to see more of this. I don't know how late we're going on here. Do not know. Do not know. How long?
long have we been going here? Where is it? How long have we been on? Okay, we've been on for almost an hour, so... Right? I mean, even I, I post every day about Matsumoto and I don't know. Not half! I was, I was hoping it would be less than five, and this is less than five, so that's okay. I've seen, I've seen at least some of the rest of these. Uh, yeah, I mean... At least for public perception, these are here. I would say. They might be, they might be, uh... Might be here. I think the movie did better than the, uh... At least the movie soundtrack, I think, is better, better love than the show. They might be C-tier. And I have a sneaking suspicion these are like this. The animation in this actually might make it better. But I think that some people might put it back here because they don't like how it works with, with these. Which would make some sense, right? We got the first movie is an S tier, second movie is A tier, third movie is B tier. Like, that's a natural progression of things, no? So I think, I think this might be, this might be the list. No F. I mean, should any of this been an F? I think the only one people might argue about is that no, no, Harlock Saga is trash. We put that in the trash. Get rid of it. So I don't know. Uh, this might be it. This might be our final list. I, I really appreciate everybody that's been hanging out. I really appreciate one year of support for Liegeverse on Facebook. It has been, uh, you know, I, I've tried to treat it like a, a side hustle or, or what I want to say is I put considerable like work hours into it. And I think, I think those hours have paid off. We've gotten to do so much cool stuff over the last year. If you see the uh, post that I made on the main page, I wrote out a little blog, just kind of, mostly for me, to just document the journey. And yearly I'll be trying to do that, to just document what happened, why it was cool, why was it a good year for Liegeverse, and I'm hoping that throughout writing those, we'll also be documenting why was it a good year for Liege Matsumoto. And, uh... Or, or what kind of year was it for Leiji Matsumoto at least we're trying to put out them good vibes that it will be these will be good things that are happening so uh, again I'm super appreciative everything that you guys have done the likes the shares the comments the inviting your friends to the page liking something you've seen on reddit we're on YouTube as well Everything means so much to me. It has made uh, finding a purpose to carry on my day-to-day -day existence so much easier. Um, and even on the worst of days when I feel there is no point, this page gives me an outlet to feel productive on some sort of level to feel fulfilled on some sort of level and as much as I owe it to you guys I also owe it to Liege Matsumoto uh I bow I I have great respect for you Mr. Matsumoto and every everything that you've done for me and your message that time will not betray dreams is what sticks out the most to me. So, thank you all again. Um, we'll, I'm back at it tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, we'll be doing a live stream soon. I do want to plug that me and Jerome Alkier are in talks to do a live stream 
Uh, you're going to get your chance to ask him questions live. We're going to hopefully set up a Reddit AMA. So there'll be questions from there. You'll be able to contribute there. Of course, we'll, we may take some live stream comments as well, but uh, just stay posted. I appreciate you. Much love and uh, have a wonderful night.